Today, I'm going to be um, presenting uh, the results of some recent experiments looking at um, Kearns and mycorrhizal responsiveness and how that's changed with increased selection pressure for uh, desirable agronomic traits. Um, before I get started, I'd really like to acknowledge my collaborators. So um, if I mistakenly say I during this presentation, I really mean the we here. I'm fortunate enough to, or very fortunate to work with uh, some great people at a number of different, different institutions, including KU, the Land Institute here in Salina, K-State and also the Perennial Agriculture Project. And the PAP or the Perennial Agriculture Project is uh, largely responsible for the majority of the funding that supported the projects that I'm gonna be presenting on um, today. Not on this slide are a number of undergraduate assistants and also PAP interns, including Mercedes, who is here somewhere, um, who were really vital in experimental setup help, uh, monitoring and data collection. So they should be um, ignored as well. So first off, um, why are we interested in mycorrhizal responsiveness in Kernza? And more specifically, why are we interested in responsiveness to arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi or AMF? Um, these are plant mutualists higher lives in the soil. They live and reproduce um, within plant roots. Um, there on the left, the picture of the spheres there, those are some, uh, is a great picture of some AMF spores. So those are the reproductive structures. And then just to the right, you can see some AMF fungal hyphae inside and also creeping outside some milkweed roots. So they help or can help um, the growth of their host plant. They can be beneficial in many ways. Um, including they can aid in resource acquisition so that they can actually act as an extension of their host plant's root system. So they can help like gather water. They can also help in um, getting at nutrients and they're well known for um, getting at phosphorus that's not readily available um, to plants. Um, they also contribute to soil health metrics such as aggregate stability. They can also aid in resistance to stressors such as drought um, and herbivory. In exchange for all these potential benefits, the host plant then provides photosynthates or sugars to the fungus. And um, we are not only interested in these fungi because they can increase plant or crop performance, but also if we find a receptive and responsive host and pair that with the right uh, AMF community or a compatible one, we may be able to increase soil health benefits beyond a transition to just a perennial uh, cropping system. Um, so when we, we, when we began to think about these studies, um, we went through the literature and had several conversations and um, talked about some expected outcomes. Um, and we're, you know, what's going to happen with Kernza with, it's a mo moving target, right? As all the selection is going on, different traits are being selected for, what's going to happen to mycorrhizal responsiveness? Well, um, in the past, um, as other uh, crop species are domesticated, there's a typical trend of decreasing mycorrhizal responsiveness. And that can happen for a number of reasons. One of those being as you select traits that um, uh, increase and, and are for rapid growth and uh, big seed size, you may not want to have traits around that are gonna allocate resources to a fungus in your roots. Secondly, secondly, these um, agronomic systems are typically uh, very high in nutrient availability. So if these nutrients are readily available and not limiting, why then would you um, have a fungus that needs or around to help you get those nutrients? And then lastly, agricultural systems in general tend to accumulate negative soil feedbacks. So species specific pathogens in their soils. So the soil uh, community that um, is accumulated is detrimental to sub subsequent growth rather than having a beneficial uh, microbes accumulate in the soil like mutualists. And these graphs on the bottom here are just kind of showing um, examples of like uh, sunflower as domesticated cereal crops and wheat. And it's just showing that there's a decrease in mycorrhizal responsiveness. So um, we had done a few different studies uh, across this group, looking at AMF and Kernza. And we were surprised when we compiled this data uh, 
looking at um, from these separate experiments that we're actually, there's a trend for increasing mycorrhizal responsiveness with selection in kerns. So on this graph, and these bars are from separate experiments. Um, on the y-axis is mycorrhizal response in percent. That is um, how a, that's performance when AMF are present. So if it's below zero, the bar is below zero, that means it's inhibited by AMF present. If it's above zero, then it is actually, growth is actually increased. So you can see with our selection cycle going from left to right, we're seeing a, an increase in mycorrhizal responsiveness where there is a positive benefit of, excuse me, positive benefit of having the AMF around. And because these were different experiments, they were under different, you know, greenhouse conditions, likely um, different um, AMF were in the mix to confirm this. So we got some um, seed. Um, we used five Kearns cycles, uh, um, just thenopyrum intermedium without any selection, cycles three, five, seven, and nine. Then we um, put those in some uh, uh, sterile soil in the greenhouse, and we had a 50-50 sand soil mix. We used one liter pots. In those one liter pots, we put 50 milliliters of inocula of one of two types. Um, the, the live inocula was a community of um, AM fungi isolated and or cultured, isolated and cultured from a Kansas remnant prairie just outside of Lawrence, Kansas. Um, the Beaver Schultz lab at KU does this all the time. They've done extensive research on this type of fungi from remnant uh, prairies, looking at ways to increase restoration and reconstruction success. Um, and al also uh, Liz Kolzel in that lab has done a lot of research looking at this type of AMF community, on, um, their effects on different crop species. So this was readily available is one reason why we chose to use this type of AMF community. Another reason is that this AMF community has evolved in a system with, a, with perennial crop species with these long lived you know, relationships. So they're likely gonna be more beneficial to a perennial crop um, th uh, than a, an AMF community that has been cultivated in a highly disturbed system and where you have very short-lived plants and high turnover. The other um, inocula in this treatment or our control was we just simply sterilized that AMF community. And it was just seven species that we mixed together. Um, so we could have something to compare that to. So here we have live uh, uh, AMF, only AMF in the soil versus sterile soil. Grew those up in the greenhouse. Um, collected above ground biomass, uh, root biomass, and then we collected a root subsample for scoring AM fungal colonization. You can um, stain the roots and look at um, and uh, score the different fungal structures in the roots and get an idea of um, colonization there. And here's the results. Um, we, sat, we found the same trend of increasing mycorrhizal response with selection. However, the signal um, was not as strong. And just to be clear, the zero on this, the phenopyrum intermedium that we used for this particular study was different than the phenopyrum intermedium on the compiled graph. The, on the compiled graph, it was a, in a weird accession number from Eastern Europe. This one was actually from Lee here. And these are all Salina cycles, nothing from um, anywhere else. Um, so here we have total biomass, shoot biomass, and root biomass. Um, the y-axis, again, is mycorrhizal response, and this is performance in AMF divided by sterile. Here we have a dashed line at one. If the bar is at one, it's performing the same with AMF as it is in sterile. Below, it's doing better in sterile soil. Above, it's doing better with AMF. With total biomass, there's a slight trend of increasing responsiveness with selection, although it's not significant. Shoot biomass, there is no really any signal, but there is a significant um, effect on root biomass where we can see um, moving from left to right, um, we have increasing mycorrhizal responsiveness below ground, but not above ground. 
So this was super cool um, that we were able to confirm that. Um, we wanted to continue, actually one more slide. Um, this is just another way to look at that data. Um, in the left, we have shoots, right? We have roots, and these are just some regression lines. Um, the solid circles and the solid line is AMF, the open circles and dashed line is sterile. And you can see with shoots, there's a slight positive trend across cycle to, to uh, mycorrhizal responsiveness in the shoots. And then there's a much stronger slope um, in the roots um, on the right. So we wanted to, after that, um, explore um, genotype um, and, and see how different genotypes responded um, to AMF um, inoculation. Um, and luckily, we, uh, Lee has this great resource of a number of genotype plants that he has every year. Um, so we got those um, from, from him. And we, for this experiment, we used cycle nine and cycle 10 individuals. Um, we used 100 individuals from cycle nine and about 60 individuals from cycle 10. We took those out of, the, uh, out of their pots, cut the roots off, separated those into tillers or clones. Um, they got a bleach bath um, to be sterilized. And then we stuck those in some sterile vermiculite and we did that so that they could re-root uh, re and also grow a little bit and recover from um, the bleach dunk. Um, and then after about 20 days, after they rerouted, we took those out of the vermiculite and then we made sure to get an initial biomass assessment. So that way we could account for um, differences in um, stem, uh, stem variation and also uh, root biomass. So we did the same soil treatments, the same uh, thing in the greenhouse, we collected above and below ground biomass. For cycle nine, we had um, uh, increased biomass across the board with, with AMF present. Um, so with total biomass on the left, shoot biomass on the right, and then root biomass on the bottom. With cycle 10, we saw the same trend with total biomass, but that was driven by root biomass, not by a shoot biomass effect. So we only saw the roots again. So we do have some evidence for increased mycorrhizal responsiveness with increased selection. Why is this happening? There's probably a number of reasons, but one of the things we've been talking about is it could potentially be the selection environment. Here in Salina, there's high nitrogen availability, but low phosphorus availability. If you have a, a buddy with you that can get at that phosphorus, you're probably gonna look better um, in the field. We have a number of things coming down, um, or a number of different experiments we wanna do in the future, including scoring all of these roots and look at AM fungal colonization to see if that matches up with what's happening with the biomass responses. We also wanna look at other AMF communities besides the ones that are in the prairie. Um, right now, we've mostly just tested prairie AM fungal communities. We wanna test those in like um, conventional ag systems and also post ag to see if there's a difference in those responses. And can we add something to the soil in the future if we need to amend those micro, uh, microbial communities to help Kernza grow better. Um, I'll skip, well, we are doing some other things looking at some soil ecosystem services. Um, right now we're setting up a greenhouse experiment looking at these perennial ag systems with different um, com uh, soil communities from those different uh, land use histories and seeing how those uh, interact and affect soil aggregation nitrogen and phosphorus leaching and also erodibility. Although in this case, we're only using one, um, one Kernza cycle and that's uh, one, one of the newest ones. We also wanna move this from the greenhouse into the field, inoculate some field plots and see what happens out there. We, we really are interested in this because we've done this before just as a pilot study where we've added prairie AMF to an old brome field, then planted a Kernza monoculture. And we did see after three years an increase in water stable aggregates when the prairie AMF were present. Um, we also wanna explore the potential to select for mycorrhizal responsiveness using that genomic modeling, um, like in the cycle nine and cycle 10 experiment. And then also we want to assess um, how soil communities alter root architecture. So with the new um, NSF Biology Integrative Institute grant that was funded in September, um, we are setting up right now um, some 
mesocosms where we are growing Kernza and alfalfa. And we're gonna add some, some are just gonna be sterile uh, mesocosms, others are gonna be with microbes. And then we're gonna actually take those apart, suck all the dirt off, and we're gonna try to do some 3D imaging of the root architecture to try to get it and see how microbes are affecting those. Um, with that, I don't think I have any time. <laughs> Thank you.